notes right but i feel like i got the roundness of the sound better if you split the difference between what we just did that's the theme song all right oh damn it i didn't bring a pen that's okay i didn't bring research really the way i see it whatever you thought was interesting was uh what should have been researched yeah it seems like sometimes we start with first time last time and sometimes we end with it do you want to start with it this time? Yeah, let's start with it. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Mood Pyramid. <laughs> and this beautiful February, we are doing Brussels sprouts, our first healthy food. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Bring on the Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I don't know where Brussels sprouts are from, but I am ex- It's from Scandinavia. They're named after a Belgian yeah. city, but I think they're from the Mediterranean. I would not have guessed that at all but it makes sense okay so have you seen a brussels sprout um have you seen a brussels sprouts on a stalk i have not i've never actually seen a brussels sprout plant oh, okay you need to look it up because it's it's interesting um my first time seeing that was here in chicago i went to a farmer's market and i was like what is that i'm like oh those are brussels sprouts it's like they're on a cob there's a big tree and the whole trunk of the tree is a bunch of different mini cabbages and that's a brussels sprout plant the last time i had brussels sprouts i'm gonna start with the last time oh. the last time i had brussels sprouts was friday evening i had i was like oh i need to get brussels sprouts and try them before our recording <laughs> on saturday um, which didn't end up happening and then i made them and I, I don't know if the bigger Brussels sprouts are as good as the smaller Brussels sprouts. I actually really like Brussels sprouts these days. I've been making them, I've been roasting them for mm-hmm. well over a year now. Now you say these days, did you grow up not liking them and that has been a turn for you? Actually, I didn't dislike them. My sister didn't like them, but I was okay with them. If they were in front of me, I would eat them. I would eat, I preferred broccoli and green beans before Brussels sprouts. Like, so on my totem of, like, where vegetables are, broccoli was above that. Yeah. But Brussels sprouts was kind of, like, on the same level as cauliflower, but definitely above lima beans. Wait, where are cauliflower and lima beans for you? Okay, lima beans is, like, okay, there there was some sort of squash that I really hated that went, it was just so overdone and watery and soupy. Like butternut? Spaghetti? Might have, It might have been butternut. No, I like spaghetti squash. I like spaghetti squash too, but yeah, butternut squash is like its own deal. It's like sweet and it's weird and it freaked me out. And my mom tried to make it sweet and I think that just kind of freaked me out more. It's like she was tricking me. Yeah, no, I'm with you on that. Yeah. We need to, as a society, we need to stop trying to make squash a dessert. It's not. <laughs> it's squash. It's a vegetable. It's a fruit or something. Wait, wait, when have you had squash as a dessert? I feel like any time anybody ever tries to make butternut squash, they they put on like brown sugar oh, yeah. and stuff. Like it's supposed to be sweet. Mm-hmm. It's gross. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah, I agree. I love spaghetti squash too, and I like it because it's a nice little side dish. Or even an entree, I guess, if you do it right. But it's never pretending to be dessert. Yeah. Squash was like the worst. And then lima beans, the only reason squash beat out lima beans was because it was being something that it wasn't. Whereas lima beans, those fuckers, they, they were like, oh, you know what they were like? Lima beans, to me, were like um, grave diggers or like morticians <laughs> because they, they knew what they were about. No one wants to be around them, but the morticians don't care. They're just, the lima beans don't care. They're just like... Hey, I'm just here to do my job. Somebody's <laughs> got to do it. Yeah. So that's how I feel about lima beans. So we can't do an episode on lima beans anymore. Thank you. <laughs> but I didn't love Brussels sprouts because my mom always made them frozen. Like, she would heat them up in the pan. And so that's when I first had them was when I was younger. 
and then I I don't know when I decided to roast them if it was that I had them somewhere and I was like oh this is good I should roast these more often and it's like a thing that I make I'll make them for various people and I, I want to talk about how my grandmother feels about them but I almost want to wait to just uh, but it was okay so let me just go with the story anyway over Christmas break I really wanted to make roasted Brussels sprouts for my grandmother because she was curious about the fact that I actually liked them and she didn't like them and I felt good I'm like oh I'm a better adult than she is I like Brussels sprouts <laughs> <laughs> and um, I wanted to make them for my birthday but my mom kind of nixed the idea unless I wanted to make them in a separate area of the house because they tend to like stink up wherever you are. Yeah, that's common with vegetables. Broccoli too. Like when you start making broccoli or Brussels sprouts, they make the whole house smell like broccoli or Brussels sprouts. Really? Yeah. I did not know that about broccoli. Have you ever microwaved broccoli? Don't. I'm not going to. Why would you ruin broccoli when you can like roast broccoli? Heck, even boiling broccoli is better than... Who made you microwave broccoli? Me, because it's significantly easier. <laughs> Vegetables for me are a tool. They are a tool to better health. I don't generally enjoy eating them. They're just there to help me become a healthier person. The journey is not there. They are there for the destination. Okay, so here's where I feel sad for you, because I'm like, you're, you're using your tools and you're almost damaging them but no i'm sorry i shouldn't judge people who microwave stuff but i just think there's so much love that you can have for i don't want to bother loving broccoli i love too many other things i want to extend my shallow and dwindling love reserves on a vegetable so i have a feeling you just overall eat healthier than i do and i do think part of that is because you don't drink any coffee so you don't have that desire to like go and have lattes, have coffee, whatnot. And I think that that's where I eat the most unhealthy. But I am surprised that you do not like vegetables more than me. I don't know if I like food. Because I'm like... This is a weird podcast for me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you do not, you do not like mean, food. I like food. Okay, but... that's it, folks. That's the end of the podcast. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and sign off. We're done. Five episodes. Well, just... Explain. I guess the way I see food is that it's more of a tool and not like an art. Uh, which is not to say it isn't an art, just it's not like, that's just not how I engage with it. Yeah. Like I know someone like, say, my sister, who is a very good cook, she would see it like it's an art. Because it's there to like be enjoyed and to be celebrated and she finds this joy in cooking. I see that I need to yeah. be a certain person with a certain body type. So in order to obtain that, I need to be eating certain foods. Okay. Like I'm constantly eating chicken breast and broccoli because chicken breast and broccoli are a nice lean protein and a good source of like minerals and fiber. Yeah. Which maybe that's why we've been doing almost exclusively desserts because desserts are the things I come to and I'm like, yes, this was a big deal. I had to go out of my way to think about eating this. Yeah. And when it's just day-to-day -day food, I'm like, yep, yeah, gotta do this or else I'll die. <laughs> so the only food I do that with is bags of a mixed salad. I'll just eat, try to eat two of those a week at work. So it's almost like I just treat it like it's a bag of chips and I just try to eat it. Because each Wait, of the bags... How do you, do you space it out? Like, oh, I gotta get through one third of this bag. Or do you just kind of eat it and you're like oh i'm down one bag and it's halfway through the week it sometimes it's like that sometimes i just eat a bag in one sitting and it's like i i know that i'm getting anxious or something like that and i'm like well i don't want to go and eat something bad I've, I've tried to like prep myself to not eat bad foods <laughs> when i'm stressed but to rather stress mm -hmm. out stress eat on <laughs> arugula or <laughs> today it was raspberries which I don't want to get into raspberries because I want to save that for another episode. So okay. I'm not going to talk about that. But here's the thing. I even have emotional connection to that herb salad mix because even I know it as a tool. Like I'm like I'm eating this to like get my get to, to fill me up to prevent me from eating something worse to give me energy. But I will admit of all the salad bag mixes, I like eating the one with the herbs in it because the herbs remind me of home. 
Hmm. And it's still like a comfort thing. Aww. If if I didn't want to be comforted, I would just eat arugula. Mm-hmm. And I've done that, but I'm like, arugula doesn't comfort me. It doesn't make me feel a thing. But Brussels sprouts do make me feel a thing. Mm-hmm. It's a thing, I, I really enjoyed them. And I think though, when they're a little bit smaller, rather than when they're bigger, that they're really good. Uh, like corn. Yes. Corn is significantly better as baby corn. I, I have mixed feelings about corn. I'm surprised we haven't talked about corn. We both come from Ohio. We should really do an episode on corn, but I don't want to talk about all the episodes we should do or right. want to do. I want to talk about this episode. Tell me, first time you had Brussels sprouts and last time you had Brussels sprouts. And Okay, should quick I, clarification. Yeah. Are we just talking about Brussels sprouts or are we talking about roasted Brussels sprouts? I mean, I thought we were talking about just Brussels sprouts in general, but if you want to specify it, then okay, rock on. I can. All right. Well, I'm going to show most of my love and have a preference for roasted Brussels sprouts. Although I would point out, I don't think we're going to do a second episode on Brussels sprouts. <laughs> so if you specify it to roasted, I don't think we will ever get back to any other version. Okay. If you want to take that shortcut, <laughs> that's fine. Well, the last time I had Brussels sprouts, I'm going to do it your way and uh, go last time before first time. And the last time I had Brussels sprouts was about 20 minutes ago, just before we started this exact podcast, because I, I needed a leafy green vegetable, because that was just how the timing worked out. Yeah. I'm, I'm on a diet right now, and uh, I eat like eight times a day, and I had Brussels sprouts in my freezer. What'd you... So I just warmed them up. No. In the microwave. No! And then I ate them. Thus getting my vitamins and minerals and fiber and my basic roughage without having to expend the time of putting them in the oven. I am, like, so close to crying right now. <laughs> look, my sister's going to do the same thing when she does like, this. Like, look, you can see the tear in my eye. I'm mm. just so... Oh, why are you so mean to yourself? <laughs> I don't... I feel like it would be significantly meaner if I bothered going through a whole rigmarole every time I needed to eat vegetables, which is like five times a day. Okay, okay, but do you... I don't want to have to heat up the old oven just to put in some old Brussels sprouts. Uh, Okay, maybe you you probably have a better relationship with food than I do. Maybe that's why I've had to work on my relationship with food, and I've had to do things like... it's not. Wait, just a second, just a second. Before we go on, yeah. don't beat yourself up about that. You have a fantastic relationship with food. <sighs> and I think the person who actually bothers cooking probably has a better relationship than the guy who throws his vegetables <laughs> in the microwave. I'm trying to, like, think of somebody else who just does that. I, I, there are, I'm sure there are people out there. I don't know. They sell them in big bags at Ralph's that say, microwave me for this long, so I just follow the instructions. Yeah. I mean, okay, if that's ultimately what mm-hmm. makes you healthier, I honestly think if you're trying to be healthier and you're trying to eat home more and you do a lot of frozen meals because that's just a good way to get started, I have no problem with that and no judgment towards that because even microwaving stuff at home is mm. better than eating out all the time or getting fast food all the time or like ordering food in because it's just it's overall better for the environment, but it's also you are being a little bit more conscious of what you're actually eating. I I mostly just feel sad for you that you don't know what it's like to, to, to cook this. Maybe this is sadder because I do know what it's like to cook it. I have cooked Brussels sprouts. I've, I've followed the recipe my sister has given me. They are delicious. Yeah. It, it, they are objectively superior when they're roasted and you put on olive oil and cracked pepper. And it, yes, I, however, am not going to do that for every single meal. And I can't pre-make that many Brussels sprouts for like the whole week. Yeah. And even if I did, I would just roast them and then I'd be microwaving that. Yeah. Like these Brussels sprouts are going to end up in the microwave somehow. Yeah. Given just my schedule. That makes sense. And and the truth is Brussels sprouts are really a thing you should eat if you're going to roast them either out at a restaurant or home alone. Because if you take them out into public, people get kind of mad. <laughs> This wasn't the first time I had Brussels sprouts, but uh, fairly recently, I was seeing a show at the Hollywood Improv, yeah. and they have phenomenal Brussels sprouts there. Mm-hmm. They roast them with prosciutto, which balances it out the flavor really well, because, you know, it kind of already has like a salty taste to it, yeah. so it mixes in with the Brussels sprouts. It's delicious. 
I highly recommend the Hollywood Improv's Prosciutto Brussels sprouts. Ooh. Um, yeah. well, next time I'm in Hollywood. Hey, I came to Chicago last time. Okay, but you have some place to stay in Chicago. If you're ever out here, you're always welcome to stay with me. <gasps> really? Yeah. That's so sweet. I kind of always assumed I had an open invitation to stay with you, but I you appreciate do. I appreciate getting it in podcast format. Oh, so now there's a record of it. There's a record of it, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad you had a good experience with Brussels sprouts. Yeah, you're right. It does make it sadder that you've had such a beautiful experience. You even texted me about it. And then you chose to go backwards and just <laughs> heat it up. And I, I... Okay, probably part of it is you are bulking up and you have to eat more. Like, just eat more. You have to eat healthy, but you still have to bulk up and eat more. I'm guessing. Yeah, I will say even even my normal meals have just gotten blander because I have to like yeah. put them together really fast because I have to eat friggin' constantly. It's now starting to make sense why so many people who are like fitness people might do like you know smoothies so much or do um, like shakes or what or like you know blend everything together because it just makes yeah. it easier to to ingest it when you made it. Did you cut them in half, or did you just, just roast them in a pan? Because you, you said you have ro- pan-roasted them, right? I just put them in a pan. Okay. I didn't bother cutting them in half. Though they cut them in half at the improv, and they were really good there. And then I actually also had them recently at uh, Pearl's Southern Comfort, which is a restaurant in Chicago. I want to hear about the first time that you had Brussels sprouts, and then I'll go into a spiel. Wait, well... Did you tell me the first time you had Brussels sprouts? I think you just told me the last time. Well, I think I said I used to have them as a kid. Yeah. Like, my, frozen as a kid. Not frozen. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't, like, gnaw on a frozen Brussels <laughs> sprout. Like, take them out like it's no. a ginger root. <laughs> I mean, I did used to eat frozen green beans, but that was funner. I don't remember how old I was when I first had Brussels sprouts. I don't either. But I was older than most kids. Because I think I had my first time when I was like 13 or so. Whoa. Yeah, my mom didn't used to make Brussels sprouts for us. Our vegetable was always peas. It was like every supper had peas or maybe green beans. And I got to tell you. Yeah. If you want to make your kid hate vegetables, feed them peas constantly. Peas are the worst vegetable. They are disgusting. No. Yeah, they're gross. They don't belong in anything. Yes, they do. What do they belong in? Split pea soup. There, you got to like cover it up with ham or whatever. Okay, but like... Have you ever had peas and macaroni and cheese and put, like, a little pat of butter on the peas? I think my mom used to put peas in casserole sometimes, and I thought it was gross because the casserole would have been significantly better had the peas been removed. Oh, yeah. No, I don't want peas in a casserole. I'm saying, like, on your plate, you have Rugrats macaroni and cheese on one side. Okay. And then you have peas, a little, like, little little thing of peas um, on this side. And it's um, and you put like a little bit of butter on top of it, and then it just kind of melts, and you're like, oh, that, I wasn't expecting that. My mom actually started making Brussels sprouts once because I actually asked her when we were at the store. I used to go shopping with my mom a lot. Yeah. And I saw the Brussels sprouts, and I said, hey, can we actually make these? Because I see them on TV all the time, and I see cartoon kids complain about them, so I might as well find out if they're worth complaining about. And she went. Yeah, okay, that seems reasonable. Let's find out if you hate these. And I didn't. I really liked them. Oh, really? Yeah. It was fun. They're like baby corn, where you feel like you're eating a whole giant vegetable in one bite. (laughs) I felt that way about broccoli. Yeah. Like, I liked liked pretending I was eating trees when I was eating broccoli. (laughs) I always used to notice, and I guess I still do, but less so now as an adult, there's a significant difference in the taste between the broccoli buds and the broccoli stalk. You could just leave a whole broccoli stalk and not miss any flavor. All the flavor is all up in those leaves. I'm very curious if broccoli stalk has ever been used for other recipes and is like part of a recipe continually. It's interesting that you bring that up because I actually use the full Brussels sprout when I cook Brussels sprouts. Emma uses every part of the sprout. I do use every part. Okay, not the stalk. I don't use the (laughs) stalk. Okay, you could not do anything with that stalk. That stalk is like terrible. Not terrible, I'm sorry. It provides life to the Brussels sprouts. And now that it's dead, we don't need it. (laughs) Do you cut the ends off the Brussels sprouts? Or did you just keep the Brussels sprouts whole, is what I'm asking. Oh, I just keep the Brussels sprouts whole. Oh, okay. Alright, so I cut off the ends, and then I cut them in half, 
and then I usually lay them belly up. <laughs> um, I used to like mix them in the bowl, but sometimes I take finally use that little brush my mom gave me. And what I use it for is to brush olive oil on top of the Brussels sprout. And then I take some sea salt from my little canister, my glass canister of sea salt, and I sprinkle it on top. And I do the same with the, what's it called? Pepper, pepper, pepper. It's with the pepper. And my oven is usually set at 425. I put it in. I usually make a lot more than I need, but I'll eat it all anyway. Mm -hmm. And I save like the ends that I've cut off. When it's 10 minutes from being done, I'll use the leftover olive oil and salt and pepper and ends and I'll put them in and they are even better. Yeah. What's great about cutting them in half is that some of the leaves kind of fall off and then they get all roasted and they get like brown and they get kind of like, I don't know what kind of taste it is. It's not smoky. It's just like popcorn. <laughs> like it's, it's, a th it reminds me, those little ones. I just, it's like a little bit of a burnt popcorn, but like a good burnt popcorn. That's my spiritual special today, folks. What did you learn in your fun fact? I do think one of the most interesting things is the whole fact that it comes off of a stalk. And I didn't know that until I moved to Chicago. I lived in a pretty country area, like a rural area. And then I moved to Chicago. Mm -hmm. and that's where I discovered that thing about Brussels sprouts. That just says something about our grocery store system. I did look it up on social media and tried to figure out how it did on social media. Huh. When I looked it up on Instagram, so I did hashtag Brussels sprouts, there was... 620 and 17 posts about roasted Brussels, about Brussels sprouts, so hashtag Brussels sprouts, but 620,017 huh. posts with the hashtag Brussels sprouts. That's so many more than I would have thought. Yeah, but here's the interesting, when I looked up hashtag sprouts, it was less. It was like 551 thousand and one hundred posts with the hashtag hashtag sprouts yeah and it's it's kind of interesting like i thought it was interesting that sprouts in general cover so many things was like had more of that was less popular than brussels sprouts were on instagram instagram and the brussels sprouts <laughs> Did you look at any of the posts or any of the pictures of the hashtag brussels sprouts particularly photogenic i would say I honestly think it's a pretty photogenic kind of vegetable when you roast it. Not when you microwave it. When you roast it, it actually looks like something. Mm -hmm. I myself like taking pictures sometimes because <laughs> I'm like, look at me being healthy. But I would say I think overall Brussels sprouts are pretty photogenic because they, especially if you like cut them in half, you have that white center and then it gets greener as it goes out. And then it roasts in a really beautiful way that it just looks... It looks homey. It looks something like it's homey, like you're home or you're off in the countryside or something. Other thing I found interesting is that I looked up how many hashtags there were for avocado, which I thought would be significantly more popular, and it is not. Mm. It was 612,900 posts with hashtag avocado. Well, is anybody eating avocado and going, hey, look how healthy I am, I'm eating this avocado? At least when it's juxtaposed to something so obviously and stereotypically healthy as Brussels sprouts, where you can be like, hey, look at this. I'm a healthy boy eating my Brussels sprouts. Otherwise, you're just like, hey, I'm eating avocado. That's a good fat. I feel as if our generation, our age group is more associated with avocado and adding avocado to stuff. And also, I think there's just a general fandom for avocado because I've seen that avocado is an addition to a lot of stuff. So I was surprised by that. Do you think people don't hashtag avocado because they're afraid of appearing more basic? Probably. And they probably don't take pictures of it. Maybe people don't hashtag it as much because it's so ubiquitous, why would they bother? Yeah. Maybe people don't hashtag it as much because they don't want to look like they're being basic and, you know, unoriginal. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe... We don't eat as much avocado as older generations think we do. I realized I had a few more numbers. I don't know if that'll add to our conversation or not. Oh, throw them at me. Let's find out. Oh, take these numbers in. Oh, just take them in your ear. Um, <laughs> hashtag tomato had 5.7 million posts. Did you just, like, take an afternoon and decide <laughs> to be like, hey, here's another vegetable. How'd that do? 
if I'm looking at the social media presence of Brussels sprouts, because I was curious if maybe it's become popular, if maybe it's become like a superfood. Also, spinach was 4.6 million posts with the hashtag, hashtag spinach. So I have no conclusion other than I was curious when it comes to vegetables, what do people find appealing? What's popular? And why do we even have a popularity with certain kinds of vegetables? And because I was just honestly curious if people talk about food in that way. Because I feel like when people talk about food, they talk about comfort food. They talk about pizza. They talk about stuff that's a novelty. They do not talk about the everyday. I think it's so weird that anyone is hashtagging their vegetables at all. Like, <laughs> I, I eat a fair amount of vegetables, and I've never been like... Yeah. Or, or even if you've ever just eaten something, and instead of hashtagging the full dish you start hashtagging the ingredients like i get it i guess if you're like hashtag mahi mahi but as opposed to like this mahi mahi has like some parsley on the side so i (laughs) guess like hashtag parsley too throw that in there get that demographic yeah i don't like instagram but one of the things i've noticed about instagram is that there is some sort of community and i want to contribute to this and i want to add to this and I want to show this and I know Instagram is about butts but I <laughs> I do I do imagine that there are probably a lot of women out there who that's how they get their recipes and that's how they exchange recipes is by hashtagging something or looking it up Hi I wanted to add a little note in this is Emma Scarepa that a lot of times I use only females to describe something or only males. And I am interested in the dynamics regarding food versus women and men in society. But I realize I have been disregarding people who are gender nonconforming or people who um, do not necessarily prescribe to male or female. So I wanted to apologize for that and add in that note and let you know that I'm going to be tried to be better in the future. I can tell you about like how I socially talked to people about Brussels sprouts as well. I'm actually genuinely curious how you've been introducing Brussels sprouts into your everyday conversation. Is it like is it like when you go to like Sunday school and they tell you to like find a way to talk about Christianity in everyday t- conversation? Did you ever get that? I I feel like I did get that note at least once a year or something like that and then I would get very passionate I'm like yeah I'm gonna do that I'm gonna leave here and I'm gonna do that and I (laughs) I would go and I'd be like you know we're we're all so selfish and we don't really connect and we really need to we really need to be good and kind and listen and like we really need to believe and you know who'll help you believe Jesus (laughs) I had a class Um, one time where they actually yeah. gave us an, a layout. They actually gave us like an example of how you could possibly turn a normal conversation into one where you get to tell them about Jesus. And it, it's one of those things that you don't realize until a couple of years later when you're an adult and you go, wow, that's like messed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brussels sprouts is like Jesus. Okay. Brussels sprouts are here for well, me. Well, here's the thing. I, I talked about my mom and my grandmother, and they don't like Brussels sprouts. And my friend Gabby, who's a really kind of a fitness person, and she does meal prep. I don't want to, like, characterize her as that, because that's not all she does with her life. But I, I guess I'm hoping that that will run out off on me. I once, like, was like, hey, how are you doing? What's going on? This was in a text. And I said, is there any sort of vegetable of the week that's really got you going? And she's like, mm, I really... I really like some Brussels sprouts that I've been making. Gets you going. And I was so happy to hear that. <laughs> you make it sound like it like hey, really gets her hey. horny. Like, oh yeah, Brussels sprouts, those real those grill my cheese. <laughs> okay, I will I will say this though. If there's any food that gets you going, it's going to be a vegetable. I tried to like <laughs> grill her for more information and she just kind of was like oh yeah I love Brussels sprouts I go to this coffee shop that I've gone to since I started working at my job 
I used to like go and then sit somewhere not at the bar and now it'd be weird for me not to sit at the bar so I've kind of become like a Frasier there in a way uh-uh. um, and I I am friends with a lot of the baristas and the baristas will tell me when they're leaving and they'll be like hey you want to try out this oat milk and they let me ask all these questions and it's just overall kind of fun to go and talk to people who are not in finance and a lot of them do different things some of them are artists some of them have just always worked in like the food industry um and so i was talking to kyle about this and kyle is an architecture student he's doing a piece where he was doing something for not doing something for logan square but he was like doing a redesign of like the main area of logan square yeah have you been to logan square yet yeah oh okay so he and i were talking about it and he was saying you know brussels sprouts are really hard to ruin he's like i don't think you can overcook them and Hmm. see i thought he was right and then i got those brussels sprouts that were too big and i think i overcooked them and they got too (laughs) juicy and i'm like "Mm, this is not nice i like mine a little dry i like wait how did you overcook them so they got too juicy aren't those opposite oh okay maybe then i didn't overcook them maybe i didn't overcook them. i mean if you overcook them wouldn't they be drier because you cook them longer Yeah, I probably did not cook them long enough then. Anyway, that was a very long story for just to say that Kyle said, you can't overcook them. But we had a very nice conversation about them, and he talked about how he makes them. What does he do? I think he just makes them with cheese. Oh, Oh, that's interesting. A lot of people add cheese. Really? Yeah. Like Parmesan? Yeah, Yeah, Parmesan. It was exactly Parmesan. It seems like that's what's going on. I was talking to... Katie, my Lyft driver. Wait, your Lyft driver once, or like, do you see her on the reg? <laughs> I have, okay, I have been very curious if I've ever had a Lyft driver more than once, and I feel like there's at least one or two that I've had, but no, this was just a one time thing. Um, I was coming back from an electrolysis appointment, and oh, this was Saturday when we were going to record, and, um, She asked me what I was doing, and I said, oh, I'm going to go record a podcast about Brussels sprouts and roasted Brussels sprouts. And she talked about how she talked about how she would make them with, I think, bacon and feta or Mm. it was bacon and onion. Mm -hmm. So like bacon and onion with like bacon bits and onion on top of it. And she said how she was on the keto diet Mm -hmm. and how bacon is okay. Yeah, bacon's all up in that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and and that was just very interesting to me. And I also looked it up if, like, Brussels sprouts were okay in the paleo diet. And so, like, for both the keto and the paleo diet, the um, Brussels sprouts are fine. That's one of the weird things about the paleo diet is that during the Paleolithic era, mm-hmm. Brussels sprouts didn't exist. Like, they hadn't evolved yet. Really? Yeah, well, we made Brussels sprouts. We, like, pooped them out or something? Or... <laughs> No, uh, as human beings, we, we created them. We bred them. The same way we did with, like, bananas and carrots. Like, these are all man-made vegetables. Um. Oh, gosh. You're just... You're just ruining <laughs> faith in so many things today. Just, like, I mean, like, bananas aren't man-made. God doesn't have a sense of humor. We have a sense of humor? That makes me sad. Yeah, sorry, yeah, bananas were bred. Okay. Carrots are also largely bred. They used to be, they used to come in purple and white and orange. They still do. They do, but not as much. In fact, orange used to be much rarer. They were, uh, we started breeding more and more orange carrots Mm -hmm. uh, to celebrate a royal family that was like the House of Orange. I think it's in, I can't remember which country it was. This is fascinating. Please continue. Uh, Well, Brussels sprouts are actually from the same family as cauliflower and broccoli and collard greens and cabbage. They're the same. They all come from the same plant. Uh, we just took this plant. Uh, I want to call it brassia something. I can't remember it. Bratwurst? No, bratwurst is <laughs> Yeah, stuff. bratwurst plants. <laughs> I can't remember the name of the actual like plant they come from, but it's uh, like brassia something. And mm. Brussels sprouts, cabbage, kale, broccoli kohlrabi they all come from the same plant we just bred different aspects of the plant if you like the little buds then we grew them to be bigger so that they're brussels sprouts or we grew them to be huge so they were cabbage 
what time period was this taking place in? I, I don't know, but I'd imagine it was after the Paleolithic era. It, this just makes me think about if we were going to be like training vegetables at all, I feel like the earliest this could have started would have been the 1950s. But no, I think it's I think it's earlier than that. Yeah, and that's that's what's surprising to me about this is that these vegetables we somehow were advanced enough to know, oh, we want to breed these certain kinds of vegetables. Yeah, well, we didn't think of it in terms of genetics. We didn't know what genetics were. Yeah. But we we did recognize very very early on as a species that uh, if a certain plant has a certain characteristic, it's offspring will share those characteristics. So you start taking plants with characteristics you like, and you start breeding those. And you're not thinking of it in terms of like, I'm gonna turn this Brussels sprout into a cabbage. You think of it in terms of like, hmm, I really like Brussels sprouts. I wish they were bigger. So you start breeding bigger and bigger Brussels sprouts until it's just a whole cabbage. That's how we have every breed of dog ever. Yeah. We weren't thinking like, well, I'm gonna turn this wolf into a pug. We were like, <laughs> This wolf is slightly more cuter. domestic than the other one. Yeah, it's like, this is a slightly cuter dog. Yeah. I'm going to breed it with other cute wolves you're, so that it turns into something else. You're doing a Mark Bryan thing right now where you're, like, moving your arms and, like, <laughs> you're, you're a marching soldier, but you're not going anywhere. Mark Bryan was uh, one of our theater professors. He was our theater history professor. And, yeah, he does do that. I think I probably, I probably picked it up from him. Now, have you done research on the paleo diet? Yeah. Are you doing the paleo? Have you done the paleo diet? No, I'm not on the paleo diet. I'm on a very specific meal plan. Mm -hmm. But the paleo diet is weird, or at least it's weirdly named, because it mm -hmm. tries to get you away from grains and more toward meat. We ate grain. Like, we've been eating grain forever. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, gosh. What if, what if the species of foods are not increasing? What do you mean? We are losing species of animals. And species of, of microbes, and it's like, like, if you think about global warming, and what I've learned about global warming and climate change, is that there are a lot of species that we're losing, and it's also because of, like, overpopulation of humans, and, like, humans are filling up most of the earth, and there's not as much room for animals and, and whatnot, and we're processing so much of our food. Yeah. Like, so much of what we eat, what we can buy in the grocery store is processed. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's making me wonder if, because we're not growing as much food, if we're, if we're going to have a lack of diversity in food, hmm. which is ultimately good for us. Like, you can't just eat spinach all the time. Yeah, like, you need a very diverse diet. You need diverse diet. And Otherwise, you just end up like Wojciech eating peas. Wait, who's Wojciech? I was bringing it back to theater history reference. <sighs> His, uh, when a play. Were you in, were you in that class with me with Mark Bryan? Probably. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Wojciech, it's uh, an unfinished play that a lot of people keep trying to figure out how to properly finish it. And one of the things is that uh, Wojciech has to eat nothing but peas. <laughs> Maybe I was in that for that class. I, I feel bad. I learned so many interesting things, and I was really interested in that class, but I did not retain a lot. Um, because I'm, maybe I just don't. No, it's hard to keep all the fun facts from the class together. Yeah. There's a lot of fun facts there. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's like what I, you need a diversity of food and so much, of, and we're also losing bees as well. Like the bee population is scarily down and people don't realize you need bees really to eat everything. Yeah. Um, you need bees because they pollinate a lot and when they pollinate, like that helps us get our vegetables. And let's say you don't eat any vegetables. A lot of animals eat vegetables. Animals that we eat eat vegetables. So if we don't have that, we're going to lose out. And when we on... die, we become the grass, and the antelope eat the grass. <laughs> yes, Simba. <laughs> um, but that would leave us basically with a lot of grain. And then with grain, of course, we could figure out a way to, like, I guess, make pasta and and whatnot. But we're just going to end up being constipated all the time. And... <laughs> I mean, so, you're right, but I guess that wouldn't have been my number one concern. Constipation is just, it sticks with you. <laughs> oh, I looked it up. Uh, the species of plant, you know, that has broccoli and kale and Brussels sprouts. Yeah. It's uh, Brassica oleracea. B-R-A-S-S-I-C-A 
O L E R A C E A. Brasca oleracea. Yeah, that's the the species that they all come from. Oh, interesting. In our original notes, I wrote something about decide whether it's fuel or a treat, or is it a staple of American food? Slash, does it oppress or does it comfort? <laughs> well, I feel like does is it fuel or is it a treat was like our first. 10 minutes yeah. of me just being like, I don't know, throw it in the microwave. <laughs> it's okay. You've determined that Brussels sprouts for you are just fuel. Yeah, I mean, I understand that they can be a treat in certain contexts, yeah. but on a day-to-day basis, they're like, just keep me from dying. I do like that they've become, I think, the fact that you had them at the Hollywood Improv place yeah that that gives me comfort i'm like oh that's something kind of healthy and yes they're adding cheese on top of it but it's not potatoes it's something that's a little bit more complex so because i think one of the hard things about eating healthy is that no one wants to eat healthy socially and we've touched on this but like it's something i'm thinking about this is just something i found is really quick research in the last like five minutes because i was looking up the name of that species quick so we were asking quickie history. before where they come yeah. from. Yeah. Well, it does look like, yes, they are from the Mediterranean. Mm-hmm. Around Italy or so probably is where they started getting cultivated. But uh, they did get their name because they ended up being cultivated in large quantities in, in Belgium. But they're not, they're not from Belgium. Like, they're not from yeah. Brussels. That makes sense. I always imagined that they were a root vegetable. Like, either a root vegetable or a bush. I just... It really threw me for a loop two years ago that they were... <laughs> they, they grow on stalks. They're like corn. Yeah. They they grow on a cob. It's like a big cob, but like it looks like no, that. No, wait, wait. So I have a question about corn. Are you saying ears of... Okay, you're, you're talking about like individual kernels of corn. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about like an individual, like an ear of corn. Oh. Like not like a stalk of corn. Okay. It looks like somebody planted an ear of corn in the ground and it was green and had tiny cabbages instead of kernels. Oh, okay. All right, I get what you yeah. mean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, my way of describing it is a little weird. No, it's perfectly fine cuz I'm trying to remember. I've never picked corn, but in Pocahontas there are several ears of corn I think attached to one stalk, right? Oh, yes, there are. One stalk of corn has a bunch of ears on it. Oh, cool. All right, that makes. Wait, sense. have you have you never picked corn before? No, I've never picked corn. Wow. I mean, it was. Have we ever been to a corn maze? We are from different parts of Ohio. Okay, we we had those corn mazes. We had that thing going on. We had a county fair. There was a lot of cornfields, but it wasn't as cornfieldy as I think Toledo was. That's true, because. Where I grew up, it was cornfields far as the eye could see. Yeah. You know what I didn't realize uh, until I moved to college about where I grew up? I never thought of my hometown of, as, of Medina, Ohio as a rural area. I, it just I didn't occur to me. I'm like, this isn't a rural area. This isn't farm country. And then I went to Denison, and at Denison... Everyone was saying, oh, yeah, we're in farm country. I'm like, wait, we are? This is this is farm country? I didn't, I had no idea how not urban Medina was. Well, it's, it's not even that I thought Medina was urban. I, I knew Medina was a suburb, but I kind of always thought, like, oh, we're industrial. We probably had factories here. Well, it is weird because I would consider Medina fairly urban. Like, it feels very much like a suburb. There's a lot of, like, there's buildings well, we and factories and, well yeah <laughs> yeah but it's much more suburban than where i grew up in Bryan, ohio okay. but i can totally see how a lot of the people at denison many of whom do not come from ohio at all like there's a lot of people from new england who would look at the entire state and just kind of go this is farmland that is what i think a lot of people who don't live in ohio think it is they don't They don't think of it as in terms of Columbus, Akron, Cleveland. They think Mm -hmm. of it in terms of of just one big farm country. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll hand it to them. They're not 100% wrong. (laughs) No. But they are, like, there is some nuance to it. Yeah. Because Medina is technically a suburb of Cleveland, isn't it? Yeah. It's it's further away, though, than some other places. Like, honestly, Medina is a, it's, it's 40 minute drive away from Cleveland. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I wish I could figure out how to say that's like Skokie to Chicago, but it's really not even Skokie to Chicago. It's like yeah, but in in country Ohio terms, that's like a normal drive. Yeah, because like, you just get used to driving like forty minutes because everything's yeah. so spaced out. Yeah, and so it doesn't it doesn't feel that bad to like drive to Cleveland for an evening or even for people to drive there every day but I as a Chicagoan could not imagine driving out of the city or Mm -hmm. daily leaving the city or going into the city every day because it just Chicago is denser it's a bigger city than Cleveland there's more traffic there's in in general Cleveland does not have as much commerce as Chicago but that is interesting and I agree with your point but Medina was also country in the fact that we we had a county fair every like every year we have a county fair in los angeles too it's just different oh what do you guys do at the county fair in los angeles i've never actually gone to it but i know it's got a lot more rides than it did back in ohio yeah that makes sense and it's got like you know like bands and stuff show up there probably get better bands than we do yeah I've never been. I imagine, I don't know if they show pigs and cows and stuff, though. Because when I think of the county fair, I think, like, your friends have pigs and cows and stuff. Yeah. And then you go to school the next day, and you're like, hey, I saw your pig. And they're like, yeah, he's a fat one, isn't he? And you're like, yeah, he's a big boy. He's going to... Wait, you went to you went to school the next day for that? Um, I mean, we'd get the first day off. Oh, okay. Because the, uh, <sighs> this is how country we were, the county fair meant we got a day off school so that we could go and like put our pigs and cows and stuff in yeah not me i didn't raise any pigs but you know my friends would yeah do 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 so jacob yes how do you want to outro us if you could cultivate brussels sprouts into an entirely new plant what would you focus on like if you were breeding them Ooh, ooh. okay so Recently, I've been trying to make toast with sweet potatoes instead of, like, bread. So, like, using sweet potatoes as a base. Oh, interesting. So I would I would definitely do something with, like, the leaves of the Brussels sprouts to do something where you, like, roast just the leaves of the Brussels sprouts. Yeah. And you get to just enjoy them, and they're, they're like, little pockets for something else, like seeds <laughs> or, like, pockets for, for um, a little tartar sauce or, like, you – yeah, I would like to – to, to make it into almost like a, a wrap thing. Do you mean like the leaves of the actual sprout or the leaves that are on the plant coming off the sprout? No, no. The leaves of the actual sprout. So like of the actual vegetable. Here's what I would do. I would like to see if you can figure out a way to make Brussels sprouts eventually so that they can be used to make tamales. So like tamale oh. Brussels sprouts. Oh, that does sound good. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get to work on that. I'll, I'll start planting a bunch of plants and seeing if I can cross, get them to have sex with each other <laughs> and create a new kind of vegetable. I would breed them down so that they're actually on a cob. Yeah. So that the whole, you could just eat the whole plant like it's corn on a cob, just pick it out of, out of the ground and start <laughs> eating like that. So every single Brussels sprout is like the size of a corn kernel and you just eat the whole Aww. plant. <laughs> okay. Do you think you could ever get too mad with power and then create mini Brussels sprout stalks? So it's like you have mini corn and mini Brussels sprout stalks. <laughs> so it's like, it's like baby corn, but for Brussels sprouts? <laughs> yes. No, but for like the Brussels sprout stalk. Yeah, just do it. Oh, gosh. I don't think you can get too much power in this. That's like, that's kind of like a Pokemon in a way, right? Because there's there's three different versions of each Pokemon, right? Yeah, some of them. So, okay, well... For my knowledge, for some of the Pokemon, there's three different versions, so it's kind, it's kind of like the opposite of a Pokemon. You're just getting smaller. Yeah. All right. We did manage to fill, like, an hour and 24 minutes with just talking about Brussels, roasted Brussels sprouts. Hey, Brussels sprouts are interesting. Yeah. Did you have anything you wanted to add? The purple varieties are hybrids between purple cabbage and regular green Brussels sprouts, developed by a Dutch botanist in the 1940s, yielding a variety with some of the red cabbage's purple colors and greater sweetness. Yeah. I lifted that from Wikipedia. I like that. I like thinking about that. It's like Helen of Troy. Or like, ooh, 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 no, sorry. What was I thinking of? The Rape of the Sabine Women. Originally, no, 
we're going to ignore the past two things I said. Mostly, I just like thinking of a tawdry night when some red cabbage is like, hey, Brussels sprouts, you want to go cross-pollinate? And we'll create a new type of purple sprout. Yeah. Good night, everybody. <laughs>